Case Western Reserve will kick off to open the second half. Again, it was snowing earlier on in the day. It was raining early as well. I think the rain has passed us now, although certainly still chilly outside. Probably one of the colder days we've had in a long time. The Spartans will kick off as we begin the third quarter. Joseph Rhodes. So Case Western Reserve set to, to off. get going here with Joseph Rhodes. Back to receive for the Tardins are Arian Hedgeday and Ethan Reefer. Taken by Reefer. And he's taken down, but another flag comes in. I was going to say, there's at least one hold. Two points for a takedown, but instead it's going to be 10 yards for a, a hold on the receiving team. And well, the Tartans offense come back out. They've had a, a lot of scenarios where it's been plus territory. They've been on the other side of the 50, start the ball. One time they started on the one yard line. Indeed, there's the holding call. So we'll see if they can string together a drive. It's It's been tough. And go ahead and, and look at the stats for the, the Spartan defense leaders on, at least on the tackle front. Gabe Trock, Ryan Cabrera, Colin Schuster's had a great game. A couple pass breakups for him in addition to some, some help in the running game. So Spartan's defense has been good. They've been put in some tough scenarios like we hit on earlier. And, you know, they don't necessarily have to be reactive. Go get the ball, get a turnover, and, and be the aggressor like you were for a lot of the first half. So the Tardins with the ball to start things off. And a pass comes to the near side. Condemi with it. Forward to about the 25 yard line. Bring up a second down and two. And that'll be Condemi's second catch. He had one in the first half for 17 yards. Hughes was really their primary guy through the air to start. Three catches, 44 yards. Beautiful touchdown reception on the, the nice, we'll call it teardrop pass from Mills in the first half. Second and two, Siliadis in the backfield. He takes, nope, he keeps, it's kept by Mills who launches down the field, the throw high and over the outstretched hands of Condemi there. That's another frozen rope throw. He can really throw it. It's, it's tough sometimes in the cold. You hear about baseball pitchers, a lot of times it feels like they're throwing a cue ball, pew ball, or a pool ball. Same with the football, it can be tough sometimes to to really get a good grip on it. You hear a lot at the NFL Combine. That's why they measure the hand size. It's a lot easier to, to get your hand around it when you got a bigger hand and, and you can kind of rip it in tough weather conditions. But Mills has been, been pretty good through the air so far. And he's keeping his hands in that hand warmer a bunch too that he has around his waist. Is The hand off there to Vasiliadis and he's swallowed up in the backfield. Still going but finally taken down. And that might have cost him a few yards trying to escape the grasp of that play. Looks like Sakalo coming down from the yeah. safety position. Great tackle. He just stayed with Vasiliadis there, and that will force the punt. And again, the field position game continues here, and it's going to be one to Jape once again to try to try to win the field position battle here. Yoder back to receive. Jabe will punt from his goal line. Oh, they're trying. They're trying to go after it. And Yoder will fair catch it at his own 47-yard line, and that's where the Spartans will get their first possession of the second half. So once again, we'll take a look at Aaron Phillips, who will come out after playing the final two drives of the first half. He'll now get a shot here to try to lead the comeback for the Spartans. He'll do it with three wide receivers, make that four. Yeah, and at halftime, if you're Coach Debs, Coach Slash, and you go talk to Aaron Phillips, you look at him and say, listen, you're no longer the freshman. You're no longer the backup. You are the quarterback of this team. You got to go out. You got to move the ball. Talked about it earlier. Get some layups. Get his confidence going. Maybe use his legs. Give him some, some run pass options and, and just move the ball again. You can't help why you're in there or the situation to get here. Now it's showtime. Let's see what the kids got. Carning Bell looking to blitz again on the first drive, play of the drive, but Orsini finds a hole, carries forward all the way up to the 44-yard line. Going a little gain tempo. Nine. See, at some point they're going to pull it, they'll throw a screen off this tempo, but thus far it's been dive when they go quick. Another run forward for Orsini. 
See if he got enough for the first down. Running Mellon signaling that they thought they had a fumble recovery, but. He got it. He also got landed on by Heffel, so. One yard to, to get landed on by a big guy, but you'll take it. Moving the chains. And this is this is what Case Western's been able to do. I'd say between the 30s, they've been really good, and it, it's gotten really tough when they go down to the red zone there. So first and 10 from the 43. It's the 10th first down of the game for the Spartans. And off again to Orsini, who muscles forward. Nice job there by Orsini to turn what might have been a loss into a gain of a few. As he fell forward, he'll give it to the 39. He's been running tough. He's, he's earning the paycheck today. So far, nothing but runs to start here in the second half. Well, and what could be the last game of Orsini's career, too? I don't know what his future plans hold. He does have another year of eligibility because of the lost fall of 2020. But well, we'll see. We'll get some alumni in his ear, see if we can get him back on campus one more, <laughs> one more go around tremendous running back that the Spartans have had for the last two years. Throw goes downfield, nicely thrown by Phillips, but over the head of Wykowski, I believe, on the near sideline. Yeah, and one thing that I've seen the, the Tartan defensive backs do a really good job of is, you heard me say earlier, get in the lap of the, of the wide receiver. You kind of get in positions, put yourself right in between yourself or them and the ball, and then squeeze them to the sideline. Sideline's kind of going to be your 12th defender out there. They've done a good job of making it tight for the quarterbacks there. It was Jackson LaJoy on the coverage. We get into a long debate on the pronunciation of the last name LaJoy. Of course, Andrew, baseball fan, so you know. Now. Forward, pass the 35 for Orsini on the carry. Uh, he's going to be just one yard short. See, it's been five or six of these fourth and shorts that they've had here. Last time got under center and ran a bootleg. Kip got helicoptered around and was able to pick it up. Oh, well, and they're going to move it. And they will, so first down, Case okay. Western Reserve. That time, Phillips keeping. Nice job coming forward with it across, I believe across the 30. We'll see where they spot it. Indeed, up to the 29. I think they got to get some of that going. I mean... Orsini's a stud. He can he can go out there and take a lot of hits, but we got 11 minutes left in the third, and you know all the fourth quarter left. You're going to have to do something other than just you know halfback dive up the middle with number one. You got to wonder though if if the Spartans might want Phillips to be slightly careful here with himself. They're they're really running out of options at quarterback sure. here. Sure. I look here. I mean they have one on one coverage at the bottom. Looks like man up top. You're going to have to throw the ball and find some of these matchups. Trying to pass there, but just out of the reach of Wykowski again. Like Wykowski playing in his senior day game. And I hesitate to call anyone who still has a year of eligibility, uh, you know, say his final game, because you never know what could happen. But again, today's certainly a day where Wykowski's celebrating his senior day. Takes the snap, handoff goes Orsini. Room to run for Antonio. As he carries past the 25, and that will be another first down. First down, and they're going tempo. Well, the running game all of a sudden is clicking for the Spartans, who might be wearing down the Carnegie Mellon defense a bit here. Quick snap, Phillips keeps it. Caught the defense by surprise. Cut back towards the end zone, taken down at the two yard line. There we go. And, well, Get up and snap. There's going to be an injury timeout. Yep, man down for Carnegie Mellon. Yep, Heffel's down with a, an injury on the 20-yard line. But you said uh, the running game is starting to open up. That's probably the best the best run that we've seen out of Phillips this year, at least at the home games that we've done. And he's tough. You know, Kip showed it in the in the first half. When you got Orsini coming head down, head down, dive, 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 and then you pull one of them out of there. It doesn't really matter who the quarterback is. It's going to be positive yardage, and it's it's really tough to defend. So good to see Phillips get some confidence. I still think it's going to have to come through the air in addition to the ground. It's you know it's not necessarily a defense you want to get one dimensional against, but it's gonna it's gonna take points of, of some form or fashion. And you know, so far this is where they've had trouble. They get down here and they're just not able to complete it. You know, Andrew, I know that they're similar quarterbacks when talking about Phillips 
and Kip, but how much does halftime benefit the Spartans in this situation where you get a chance to recollect with your with your quarterback here, maybe readjust your game plan? Yeah, well, it's, it's what I was saying earlier. You can kind of look at them and say, hey, listen, this is your half. This is your team. You're going to go out there. You're one of the leaders of the team now. It doesn't matter. You're only two months into your college career. You take a deep breath, get them to realize that, and, and focus on solutions. So first down and goal from the three from the shotgun. And Phillips tries to sneak through. Is he still going? He is, and he's in for the touchdown. There you go. Aaron Phillips leading the Spartans down the field against one of the best defenses in the country and pulls off the quarterback sneak for the touchdown. And the Spartans with a fighter's chance in this one. 14-6 now the score. Yep. Looks like we got a maybe an injured lineman. Coach Debs is out there with the training staff. But you know, in the meantime, credit to Aaron Phillips there. He didn't get it on the first try, didn't get it on the second. The third try is finally able to kind of twist and wind his way in there. And you know, that's probably the area he's most comfortable with. He's been their short yardage quarterback. They've done kind of that wildcat formation all year. So that's where the majority of his reps have come. And now, like we said, the most important thing was breaking the seal, showing you can score on this defense. And and that's a big, big confidence booster for everybody on the sideline. Peter Kelly, the player down for the Spartans, the junior. He was being looked at by the Spartan training staff, but again, a, a nice drive for Case Western Reserve as they come up with points for the first time today. Kelly will walk off on his own power and seems to be okay. There we go, a little fist, fist pump from Debs. Kelly jogging off. Playing Carnegie Mellon usually has a pretty good effect on getting over some of those soft tissue injuries or, or a twisted ankle, stuff like that. You know, you, you kind of start to get the feeling that momentum might be shifting. If not momentum, then just pure emotion in this game seems to be shifting in the Spartans' favor. Yeah, well, th this defensive series coming up, this will be big. This will be a big one. Good job by Phillips to get that snap down. He does it all. And with the extra point, Joseph Rhodes pulls the Spartans back within seven in this one. 14 7 the score. We'll take a break. Come back with you in just a minute. An extraordinary dining experience where you're certain to enjoy the ambiance as well as the menu? Table 45, Restaurant and Bar is the award-winning mixed culture restaurant located at the Intercontinental Cleveland, offering cuisine from around the world created by accomplished local chef Zach Brewer. Open every day, the atmosphere at Table 45 is relaxed yet inspiring with weekday chill-out happy hours, a behind-the-scenes chef's table, and outdoor dining on Patio 45. Call for more details or reservations at 216-707-4045 or visit us at TBR. 45.com or on Facebook. We do more. We step up, stand out, break rules, and spark revolutions. We ball, boss up, shatter records and ceilings and expectations, and at the end of all that, we still end up with less. Well, you could just tell momentum in this game has changed as the Spartans coming out fired up. Joseph Rhodes with the kickoff and sends it back. Return there. And the return up just to about the 40 yard line. And that is where Carnegie Mellon will take over, right about the call the 38, it appears, and a nice return there, and that might help to stall some of the Spartans' momentum here. We'll see if the defense can answer after the Aaron Phillips touchdown run. Yeah, and, and like you said, the momentum has just started to shift into the, into the color of navy a little bit. This will be a huge drive. You can especially on a three and out, but more importantly, just get them to punt the ball, get the ball back to your offense. Got to capture that momentum and, and let the offensive line go back to work. I was looking to pass far side, looking for Hughes, but it's long. It's a tough throw, going from the right hash all the way to the opposite sideline. Hughes unable to come down with it. Second and long here, look for them to either take a short pass Maybe a run and play. You don't want to get into third long. The Spartans defense is starting to get a little bit of swagger. You see Caden Tong is starting to move some people up front there. So look for them to pick up maybe 
I don't know, three, four yards, low risk, try and get into third and medium. 14-7 the score, 10 minutes left in the third quarter. Another pass attempt for Mills, who's going deep, might have a play here. And pulling in the ball that time is Hughes, a beautiful catch. And boy, that was a tremendous play. Another well-thrown ball there by Mills. Well, John, I said three or four times they're going to take a little layup, and what do you know, they bomb it. So good throw by Mills. Probably a better catch there by Hughes. Dominic Sice was right there with pretty good coverage, but most of the time good quarterback play is going to beat good coverage like that. Off the long throw, going to pass again, and this time Hughes couldn't hold on. Uh, the pass out in the flat, and that'll bring up second and 10 from the 25. Got to catch it, and then he can run. Got to do A before he can do B. Boy, Hughes has been a frequent target once again today. Yeah, there was that one drive where they went to Everett for you know, two or three in a row, and haven't really seen much out of the tight end position. Typically, that's a big part of this offense. We've seen him in motion. He's definitely been more than willing to to serve as a lead blocker for Vasiliadis back there, but it's not as active in the in the pass game as we've seen in years past. Hand off that time to Vasiliadis. He gets taken down in the backfield. Looks like Ryan Cabrera there getting a big TFL for the team. Cabrera so fast and just comes off the edge there, and boy, he was right on Vasiliadis. So they'll set up a third and 11 from the 26. Another big stop here for the Spartans. If they can get it. I would imagine two down territory, so if you're Carnegie Mellon, you might not try to take the whole chunk up here, maybe try to break it into two shorter gains. Yeah, and they, they typically have a pretty strong place kicking unit. Again, didn't get a great looking warm ups to see what their range is gonna be. Throw comes, it's over the top, looking for the end zone, and it's overthrown. Good coverage once again by Schuster. He's, He's been playing against great. Kademi. Playing really, really well on his senior day. And I'm confident he, he is done after this year. This, <laughs> this is Schuster's last game. Colin what? Schuster now a fifth year and is, is pretty much start. Well, I don't know if he started, but he's played he in played. almost every game. Yeah, he definitely played as a career. freshman. You know, it's interesting when you have his Carnegie Mellon line up for the kick here. It's from about the 33 yard line, so we're looking at a 43 yarder. The crowd gets loud. There's the snap. The kick is no, up sir. and it's short. No. Well short. Okay, so, there's the stop they wanted. So Hannah, on the field goal try, can't convert it. Now the Spartans getting the ball back here. And again, momentum has continued to shift in the case Western Reserve favor. So the Spartans will see if they can take advantage once again. And Aaron Phillips, boy, you want to talk about stuff that legends are made of. If Aaron Phillips finds a way to win this ball game today, the Spartans down to their third string quarterback again, someone with a ton of talent who the team thinks high of, but just hasn't played a ton this year. Well, he's got an opportunity. He has a chance to make the most of it and now working with some confidence as well. First play from scrimmage here, hands off. No, he keeps it. Oh, yeah. Boy, they had me sold from up here. I thought that was in Orsini's hands, but Phillips keeps it, rolls out to the outside, gains about eight on the play, maybe a little less. Let's call it, yeah, we can call it eight, I guess. So second and two from the 34. Handoff this time does go to Orsini, who carries forward, and that should be a first down. Yeah, and they're starting to feel it a little bit. They will move the chains. I keep saying he's going to have to throw it, but maybe he doesn't. You know, there was a game a number of years ago between the Panthers and the Falcons. The Panthers had Chris Wenke as their quarterback, <laughs> and they essentially ran the Wildcat the entire <laughs> game, where Wenke pretty much just handed off or ran it up the middle the entire time. I, I, you know, it, it, it works. If you can pull it off, well, here he's throwing to the near side. But you have that dynamic ability as Nurek carries forward almost to the 39. You have that dynamic ability with Phillips out there, with Orsini out there to just play, let them play off of each other today if you can. Yeah, he's done a good job of it. We saw in the first half those linebackers, the Corys are going to be coming, slamming down, they're blitzing. The D-line is holding people up up front. You're probably going to have to attack on the edge. There's not a whole lot up the middle. You're going to have to make the reads and make the plays. Gain of three, second and seven from the 39. 
Orsini, the lone man in the backfield. Four receivers bunched on the outside. Here comes the throw. Phillips throwing over the middle. Finds Wykowski, who makes the catch on the Carnegie Mellon side of the field. It'll be at the 46-yard line, and the Spartans moving the ball against this defense all of a sudden. Here comes the tempo. This has been halfback dive most of the night. They're going to pull it at some point. And this time it's Phillips again with it, running to the outside. Gets past the 45, up to about the 43. They'll call it the 44. And Good tackle by Hegde there. They'll bring up a second and seven. You just feel the energy in the building has changed. Yeah. Well, momentum's a real thing. The snap was low. Handoff goes to Orsini, who loses a yard. Yeah, it's tough. Anytime there's a, a low snap, you see it all the time. Just the operation gets just a little bit off, and, and it's going to mess up the read there. So and now, I, I got to imagine, with this type of offense, too, you get that low snap, the rhythm is off a little bit. Orsini's cutting over. It just throws everything off. Yeah, when you're running the read option, it's got to be crisp, at least on the snap and the quarterback exchange perspective. So third and seven from the Tardins 45. Four receivers, three on... Phillips is left, one to his right. The lone back is Orsini still has gotten the bulk of the load here so far. Orsini goes out wide, the throw comes. Perfect pass to the middle of the field where it's caught and reeled in by again. Coyne again. I mean, you can see on the replay, he got rid of it a hair before he got hit. Great job by Coyne, good strong hands. Up there able to drag Williams for a couple extra yards as well. Quick handoff once again. This time Orsini's knocked back. Again, it seems like Carnegie Mellon keying in on Orsini in those situations more so than, than before now. Let's see where they spot it. Looks like he got back to the line of scrimmage, so second and 10. They'll call it 11 on the scoreboard. This is definitely, this is four down territory. So you got from here, three plays to get 11 yards. What's impressed me about Phillips so far, there's a fearlessness there that is oh, yeah. incredibly impressive right oh, yeah. now. Look to pass here. And throws that one away in the direction of Coin. Not sure if that was a miscommunication or if he's just looking to get rid of it. Yeah, something there. It almost looked like an out and up that they were trying to run, but. Not on the same page. So now third and 11, this is a, a play. You, you don't want to get into fourth and 11. You're kind of hands tied at that point. So take something that has a, I would say, a high floor, something that you know you're going to get three, four yards on and just kind of open up the possibilities for, for fourth down coming up. Watch out for Fromberg over the middle here. He's lined up on the left side with three receivers there. Phillips keeps it, trying to find some room. He had some, he's coming down the sideline. Draws contact at the 20 where he's out of bounds. You talk about the fearlessness. He didn't have any fear there. He put his head down. You're going to see him come up. We'll see what DB had the unfortunate job of staying in the middle. And boom, good run. And it looks like Coach Debelak will bring out the field goal kicking unit here. Now, in the back of my mind, I do come back to what you said earlier. We're on the third string quarterback. Should it be going out there, putting the head down? Yeah. Banging it out with the linebackers and DBs. By the way, speaking of the third string quarterback, important to note now that the third string quarterback is also the holder here. So something to keep in mind, do they try anything? As the field goal is blocked. Don't touch it. And so the field goal attempt by Rhodes gets blocked. We'll see who got the hand on it. Coming off the edge, the right side. Oh, it was up the middle. Up the middle. Tartan's able to hold. And so Carnegie Mellon thwarts the attempt despite what was probably one of the better drives of the game for Case Western Reserve today. Yep, but I would say now it's a one possession game, game on. Your quarterback can move the ball. He's building some confidence. I would say now you can really get after it on the defensive side, knowing that you got the offense to come on the other, the other half behind you. I will say I'm a little surprised they didn't go for it in that situation. Yeah, that kind of broke the tendency. I don't, I don't know if Coach Debs was just looking to, to get some points, some form of points out of that drive, but up until that point in the game, they had been going for it on anything under really fourth and five. So 422 left in the third, still a seven point game. Handoff comes up the middle. Just 
not a lot there in the middle. And Case Western, their defensive line, they never, really since Ian Henderson, they haven't had anyone that is, I would say, a traditional nose tackle, getting up 290, 300, 310 pounds. It's really more kind of that 260, 70 range. Guys that are real athletic can kind of split the gaps and you know penetrate and allow these linebackers to come in behind them and clean up. Michael Kelly plays that nose tackle role now for this team. He's had a great year. Looking to pass near side. Hughes with the ball. Turns to the 20. Has some space, but a good job to pull down Hughes there. And once again, that's Colin Schuster, who is playing off him on coverage, but recovered quickly to keep that from becoming a big gain. If Hughes gets to that sideline and gets past Schuster, he might run a long way there. Yeah, and Hughes came up just hobbling a little bit. Looked like just a little little ankle tweak, I'd expect to see him back, but they've been playing off. They kind of put Schuster on an island down here on the bottom. They usually pick sides, uh, Miller's defense, they usually have a left corner and a right corner, and, and they'll put Schuster on an island. He's going to play conservative, play off, and typically let them have, you know, a five, six yarder if they want it. Run up the middle, Vasiliadis again. Schuster and Sakalo in on the tackle. Set up a second and five on the 31. Been a little bit of bent, but don't break for the Spartans defense here in the second half so far. The team is within striking distance. Mills looking to pass, and the throw goes long. Good play, good play. That defensive line, the linebackers are starting to swarm. It doesn't take much on the back end. You just gotta cover for one, two seconds, let those guys get in there, disrupt the quarterback's timing, and and throw off the play like we saw there. So now third and medium. This has been a down that the defensive line and the, the edge guys have been able to get pressure on Mills all night. And again, it's a one score game. You know, on the other side, you got Phillips starting to gain some confidence. He's shown pretty good ability on the ground and, and good enough through the air. So I would imagine once he gets back out there, he'll continue to improve, but got to give him that chance. Got to get off here on third and five. Three receivers from the shotgun. It's Mills, one back, that's Vasiliadis, who takes the handoff, tries to find some space, and does, and should have enough there for the first down. Yes, he does. And that's big. You know, at halftime, and we haven't seen the updated stats, but at halftime, Carnegie Mellon was only one of seven for, on third down. Case Western has shown a really good ability to get off the field and give their offense a chance, and that's probably the first, you know, third and medium conversion that we've seen out of the Tartans so far. So first and 10 from the 38-yard line now for Carnegie Mellon. Pass comes, near side, caught. And nice gain after the catch for Ethan Reefer. It's probably the first time we've seen his name. He's been back there on kickoff returns, but we got a flag. Okay. And another ineligible man downfield. Yeah, and that's a, that's a flag, candidly. They can call 80% of the pass plays in college now. When you have that run pass option, the read option game, the linemen don't actually know. They don't have any idea if you're running it or passing it. So they think it's a run. They'll get usually it's about two or three yards is kind of your grace period. If you get past that that threshold, then the refs are going to call it on you. So just a couple of linemen wander downfield and, and negates what was you know a solid pass play and a first down for them. So back to the 33 yard line. It'll be a first down and 15. See if that stalls some of the momentum that Carnegie Mellon had been building. Pass comes and complete. And caught by Condemi. Short of the first down, but not by much. That's another throw that Mills drilled it in there. So up to the 46. The well. It'll be a second down and two now. Another throw for Mills. Looking deep. Looking for Reefer, no catch there. That was a great play. Great play by Schuster. They ran a, a sluggo, so a slant and go. When they run that slant, you want to be in a position where you can collision the receiver, kind of get in the way, and, and to extend his route, run the go portion of that, he basically has to run right through you. So Schuster 
great job reading the route. Great job being in, in good position and disrupting that timing there. Well, he's just been brilliant today. He's had a great career, but I think this might be the best game we've seen out of him. It's the best I've seen. It's the best I've seen at home for sure. So third and short, third down and two from the 46. Another big play coming up. Snap comes. Bills looking to pass. Again going deep, this time for Hughes, and he catches that. Oh. Yeah, he did catch it. Sakalo saying it hit the ground, but I think he caught that clean. Wow, I can't believe that. I'm third and short, throwing it up there like that. Sakalo got the head around. What a catch by Hughes. Yeah, it moved, but it didn't hit the ground. That was a, a big time throw and catch. So the second big third down conversion on this drive for Carnegie Mellon. Now along the outside, it's Vasiliadis. Takes it up to the 19. So a gain of six on first down, brings up a second down of four with 46 seconds and the clock ticking here in the third quarter. Man, I can't get over that third and two call. Not only the call, but the run looked like a slot fade that they ran there. The execution was great. Huge, huge guts to, to, I guess, call that play call. And like I said, Mills is able to convert. Up the middle again, Vasiliadis, and he's taken down. Looks like Dudowski. And that'll be the fourth. And so Carnegie Mellon will let the clock run down on the third quarter, and they'll take a seven point lead. But Case Western Reserve's offense showing some signs of life here in the third quarter. Get back within a touchdown. We'll take a break. 14-7 as we head into the final quarter of the 2022 season for the Spartans. In search of an extraordinary dining experience where you're certain to enjoy the ambiance as well as the menu, Table 45 Restaurant and Bar is the award-winning mixed culture restaurant located at the Intercontinental Cleveland, offering cuisine from around the world created by accomplished local chef Zach Brule. Open every day, the atmosphere at Table 45 is relaxed yet inspiring with weekday chill-out happy hours, a behind-the-scenes chef's table, and outdoor dining on Patio 45. Call for more details or reservations at 216-707-4045 or visit us at tbl45.com or on Facebook. We do more. We step up, stand out, break rules, and spark revolutions. We ball, boss up, shatter records and ceilings and expectations, and at the end of all that, we still end up with less. Fourth quarter about to get going here at the Santo Field, final quarter of the season for the Spartans, who trail by a touchdown. Defense will be on their heels a little bit. Third and three, a big play from the 18 for Carnegie Mellon. They've converted two big third down plays already on this drive and trying for one more here. Vasiliadis, who has been in the backfield throughout this drive and has run the ball well, probably as well as he's run it all day. Vasiliadis up to 41 yards for the day. The Spartans have held him in check for the most part. Mills looking to pass underneath and upended. And it appears it's right about at the marker and they will call it a first down as making the catch. That's up on the play, that was Everett. That's a big catch and holding up, probably more importantly, holding on to it by number six Everett there. Good play call, little boot action. Sneak out the tight end, then, and that's a huge first down conversion. You said it about Everett. They, they've kind of used him creatively and, and put him in motion a lot, but he's made a few big plays today for this team. So first and 10 from the 15. And off of Ciliatis, taken down at about the 12 for a gain of three. Yeah, and we've seen how much work and, and effort went into getting one touchdown for Case Western, and you know it took them basically three quarters to get that done. So Carnegie Mellon is looking again here, see if they're able to punch it in, go back up two scores, and that that would be a big lift for the Spartans' offense. Again, not not something they can't handle, not something they can't do, but you think of everything that went into just getting one of those touchdowns, it, it would be an uphill battle. Comes near side, caught, reefer into the end zone for the touchdown. Ethan Reefer 
with just his second catch of the day. But it's good for a touchdown, and that's a huge play for Carnegie Mellon as they'll take a two-score lead heading into the start of the quarter here. Yep, and then, you know, pending the extra point, that'll get back up to a 14-point lead, and it's going to come back down to Aaron Phillips in this offense. He showed he's, he's able to move the ball. Looks like it's going to be primarily on the ground for them with just a little pass, and there we go. There's the old announcer's jinx. Missed yep. the field goal. Extra point, no good, so it's a 13-point point game. So we'll see. We'll see who Coach Debs in this offense is able to cook up. When you think about their losses this year, you know, outside of the Johns Hopkins one, which was, you know, for a variety of reasons, not necessarily the closest game that we've seen ever. The other two losses to Grove City, to Westminster, 14-13. Defense played great. Offense just wasn't able to get it done. In this scenario, defense has played, again, pretty strong, I would say, given the, the situations they've been put in. They've really stepped up. Now it's time for the offense to kind of pull their weight. And again, they're doing it with their third string quarterback. Understood, but not much they can do at this point. He's got to go out, he's got to execute. Well, and Aaron Phillips has given the team some life here, here in the second half, and so we'll see, but his task just got a little bit taller after the touchdown by Reefer. So now the Spartans will try to overcome a 13-point deficit here with 13.47 left in the game. Looks like they got a chance to return this one, get some field position. That's Orsini. And he's taken down at about the 25-yard line. And so that is where the Spartans will start their drive. Okay, and if you look at all right, so they got to basically get twice in the end zone here to to erase this deficit. That, that's going to be the goal. It starts with getting a score on this one. How are they going to do that? It's probably going to be staying out of third down. Up until this point, they've had 14 chances to convert on, four, on third down. They've only gotten four of those conversions. So you're given three downs to get the first down. You don't necessarily have to take all those. Let's be productive on first down, productive on second down, stay out of third and long, and, and just make it easy on yourselves. And again, it's probably going to be run heavy, read option. Got to do it through the air at some point, too. Gage Juessler in the backfield, takes the handoff, carries past the 30 to the 31. This looks like we'll get a Deusler drive here. Again, they typically switch off between Orsini and Deusler. And the Spartans looking to go quick. Another handoff goes to Deusler. At up some to point, about the 32. At some point, Aaron's going to have to to take a step and realize they got to get set. Probably could have called it there. You got wide receivers running around, got to take a breath, let everybody get set on the offense. Even if you're going tempo, what's the easiest way to kill tempo? If you get a, a procedural penalty. So make sure your receivers are set, and then we can go from there. Chalk it up to youthful exuberism. Sure, just a little eager. Third and three from the 32. Now Phillips taking a beat with the clock ticking here, 12.47 to play. Takes a snap, handoff. No, he keeps it. And we'll get to about the 38. They're gonna and kick it, which I'm a little surprised. I mean, we're getting down to getting down to crunch time here. It's by the time they kick this, it'll probably be under 12 minutes left. Ball at the 33 here, so it would be a fourth and two. Yeah, and that's that's a disappointing third down. I mean, you had third and two. Showing a pretty good, pretty potent running attack here in the second half and, and just not able to pick up any yardage there. Nice punt by good Rhodes. Kick. Really good Roll kick. a little bit. Keep going. And it'll stop inside the 15. It looks like about the 12 or 13 yard line is where Carnegie Mellon will start. Well, again, I think if you're Coach Debelak, for the most part, your defense played really well today. You know, you get to play the field position game even this late, thinking that maybe your best chance at moving the ball 50 yards downfield might be punting and letting your defense try to play here. Yep, yep. So you got the punt off. You you did step one. Now step two is you got to clamp down the defense. Look for the DBs to be just a little more aggressive. You know, for a lot of the game, they've been willing to give up those five and six yarders. You might clamp it down just a little bit. Turnover here would be huge. I mean, so far, Carnegie Mellon's winning the turnover battle two to nothing. Case hasn't been able to get their hands on the ball just yet. Mills with two wide receivers to his right, steps back after taking the snap, throws Ooh. to his right, and it's caught at about the 19-yard line. And that's the play. When they when they do that rollout, you got to push the coverage, 
Coach Miller's yelling it out there. I know he is. You got to push the zone, push the coverage, and try and get underneath it. It's a, it's a good throw. It's a, it's a dangerous one, though. Condemi with the catch there sets up a second and four from the 19. It's Vasiliadis, and he will have a first down on the carry. Yep, and every first down, call it two, two and a half minutes at a minimum is going to come off the clock. So as they are up two touchdowns here, they're going to look to milk it. Not necessarily focused on just running the ball. They'll probably be two-dimensional here for a little bit longer. But like I said, each first down is going to be probably two and a half minutes off that clock. 20 to 7 is the score. Just over 11 minutes left in this one. Pass from Mills. And did he catch it? He did. Condemning again. Mellon has some receivers with just really good, reliable hands. Yep. These guys that could catch the football. Yeah, they're not necessarily burners. They used to have a couple guys that could really, really run and were, were really quick and you know weren't necessarily full route tree guys, which just kind of burn and, and chuck it up to them. But these guys are, are, I would say, more technicians, really strong hands, reliable, like you said. Look, it's interesting watching the, the revolution of the Carnegie Mellon offense over the years. As Mills looking to pass here, comes near side Hughes, and he's out of bounds for a first down at the 35-yard line. But remember how run-heavy this team was when they had Sam Benger there. And well, even before that, they used to be triple option not too long ago. So really run-heavy back in the day. Now all of a sudden, you know, again, this is a team with good running backs, but you can tell they like to pass the ball. I mean, this is a passing offense right now. Yeah, it's, it's usually tight end focus and then some speedy receivers, but... Sam Banger, he said he was there for forever, several years, held several records, and now with Faciliatis, they've they've had a couple good runs of tailbacks here. Faciliatis again, and he's starting to heat up a little bit as he carries past the 40 up to about the 43-yard line. Yeah, he's he's heating up because the big guys up front are heating up. They're really starting to to get hats on the Spartans and and moving them wherever they wherever they please. You get the feeling that Carnegie Mellon can sense that they're a couple first downs away from really putting this game away. Darn. As the throw down the field, catch is made but out of play, and it'll be incomplete. That's Reefer again, and he's had a nice second half. You can tell Mills starting to look for him more and more, and it's been successful. Oh, and here you go. You got third and short. If they get stuffed, I would. I would expect them to punt it. I wouldn't say this is two down territory. That would be really risky. They'll do it now that I, I said that they shouldn't. But so far in this drive, they've showed if they're going to run it, it's going to be four or five yards minimum. That would be another huge pickup for them here. I, I can't imagine them going for it on fourth down here. I'd be surprised. Yeah. Just don't jump. Don't jump off sides. Hand off. And Vasiliadis with the first down and more, and he may have a lot more. Goes down the sideline. To the 25 where he's finally taken down. Yeah, they're feeling it. You can see that sideline is smelling it. Gonna go tempo and try and rip off another one here. Some good blocking. It's finally Gabe Trock who took him down. Now on first down, another handoff. And they are putting the ball in the hands of their junior running back and letting him try to run this clock down as much as he can. We'll get a hold. So now move the ball back. Ball be set at the 33 yard line. Okay, there's your chance. There's kind of your little break. He's either going to take a TFL, something to, to stop the bleeding there. Holdings on first downs can be can be complete drive killer. So you got first and 20. This play, this is the most important play of the game right here. Pretty much every play going forward is, but got to get a stop, got to get him to second and long. Handoff, this time it's Bauma, who spells Vasiliadis, and we'll get another flag on the play that comes in late. In the area of holding. Yeah, they got another hold. Now Coach Debs will have a decision. Yep, take him back. We're going to have first and 30.
You know, I, I would imagine at this point, first and 30, if you're Carnegie Mellon, you're content to run the ball and run the clock a little bit here. And worst sure. case scenario, even if you don't gain yards, you take time off the clock, you can pin them deep with a punt. And all of a sudden, then you're looking at forcing the Spartans to try to score two touchdowns with maybe their back against the end zone and, you know, six minutes left on the clock. Yeah, it's a little different if it's a one-score game. With them being up 13, they can they can really get conservative and play that field position game. But, I mean, first and 30 now, there, there's no excuse. You have to get off the field and force a punt here. That'll be Bama, who takes the ball to the right. Yeah, and it's not quite at the point where they're going to start doing this, but eventually Case Western will start taking timeouts when, when Mellon has the ball. Again, all three timeouts left. We're going to go under eight with this next snap. Got the old second and 28 super common scenario here. I would think they, they do some, some form of a run. If not a run, it's going to be a 99% completion rate pass, but probably a run play of some form. And I think it's a good example of how you can turn what what was sort of a negative drive here, at least, you know, by, by the time they got those two penalties into a positive. Bill's looking to pass here, and... Wow, he almost caught that. Long, yeah, boy, <laughs> Hughes has just had himself a tremendous day. What a talented receiver. Well, that was big there. They ran that sluggo again, and... For one reason or another, Schuster's able to cover that one at all at all points, but it stops the clock. That's what's the, the big result of that play. Stops the clock, it's third and 28. You gotta get off the field, no matter what. Probably gonna be conservative here if they wanna complete it for 12 yards, go for it. It's over two minutes, so even if you get them out of bounds, the clock will run. I, I would imagine that if you're Carnegie Mellon in this situation, the end goal of this play is not necessarily to get first down, it's to keep the clock keep running. Keep the clock running. Keep the clock running, see if you can get Case to burn a timeout put your head down and, and get five, six yards here. Hand off to Faciliatis, who's back in the game. They has a nice gain, taken down at the 35. And again, the clock will run. We'll go under seven here. Carnegie will send the punt team out and yeah. they'll try and pin them back. When yeah, they, if and when they pin them back here, this defense is gonna be swarming. They know Case either is gonna have to drop back pass, which they're not necessarily comfortable doing with Phillips, or they're gonna have to run it. So. Those safeties are going to be flying down, and you'll see a pretty aggressive defense from them. So Jay back to punt, standing at midfield. Yoder on the return, standing at the 10-yard line. Is the clock ticking, and Carnegie Mellon will take either. a delay game. Yeah, I believe so. Makes sense, especially if you know your punter. Really, that five-yard difference and you're at that point in the field might not make much of a difference. Well, it's kind of like your golf game, right? Sometimes you need a little more room to operate. More of a six-iron guy than... You, you keep talking about my golf game as if I have one. <laughs> your skills on the course, however they, good or bad they may be. They extend to Tiger Woods golf, and even there, they're severely yeah. lacking. Well, hey, Tiger can't hit his driver either. Remember that. Trying to cough and corner it, and let's see where that one lands. Well, it takes a bad bounce, drops back to the 20, and that is where Case Western Reserve will start the drive. Well, probably really when you get down to it for the Spartans, this is a, a must-score drive and probably need a touchdown here as well. Got to have a touchdown. Got to have a touchdown. I'm not, not really sure what it's going to look like. They've been very run-heavy, as we said. It's been a lot of Orsini, a lot of Phillips. He was pretty good when, we, when we've seen him pass. It's been more the, the intermediate, couple 15-yard digs going over the middle. We'll see if they really unleash him and you know, maybe look for some rollouts where it's either a deep pass or a run, see if we can uh, you know, find what's best for his skill set. Phillips looking to pass. Rush comes on. The throw a little short. He's looking along the near sideline for Coin. That was a tough throw. If he makes that throw, then... And we really got a superstar back there, but pressure coming in. Almost able to slip it in there for, for Coin. One thing they got to watch out for is Mellon knows they're probably going to get pretty pass heavy. And if you get pass heavy and you're in third and long, they can start putting some linebackers in and really wreak some havoc back there. Well, that's been the Carnegie Mellon game plan most of the day today, whether it was Kip or now with 
Phillips there, he makes a nice throw along the sideline and the pass is caught for a first down. Nice job by Arrington. Arrington will pop up here kind of randomly in these home games that we've done. He'll have a couple big catches here and there, not necessarily a volume guy, but when he does catch it, it seems like each time it's going for a first down. Big first down there. It's now first and 10 from the 31 as the Spartans moving the ball forward. Have to pick up the pace here. This will be Phillips. And another nice run forward up to about the 45 for another first down. And like you said, they're going to have to go tempo here. Pretty much every play from, from here on out. Mellon, at some point, they'll start getting into not a full prevent, but a, a, a cushion defense, I would say, where they're going to be content with giving up five, six yard comebacks. Well, and I got to imagine if you're Phillips, it's, it's hard to run in a hurry up offense with an offense you haven't run with a lot. You know, you, you yep. have not had a lot of opportunities as he again runs the run up the middle, up to midfield. So second down and five, but the clock's still ticking. And we'll probably be right about at five minutes when they snap this ball here. Spartans with three timeouts, down 13. Have to find the end zone here, the game's pretty much over. Second and five from the 50. Snap taken, near side, Wykowski. Tries to escape the defense, gets up to the 45 where he's stopped. Yep, that's a first down, so we'll stop the clock there. They haven't moved the change yet, and now they will. And they will run the clock. So even though he got out of bounds, over two minutes, they're gonna run the clock unless it's under, under that threshold. First and 10 from the 45. Spartans moving the ball again on offense. And they come up with points here. Phillips with pressure behind him, looking to go deep down the sideline. Might have Fromberg Man. just out of his reach. Man, that was right there. Right there would have been a huge play. Good throw by Phillips. Good vision coming all the way back. Good pocket presence to shift his left and really give Fromberg a good chance to make that play. About two feet out of reach. So now you got second and long. They got four minutes and 38 seconds left on the clock, down 13 again. Hunt for a touchdown. Can't do anything else. Can't worry about anything else until you get in the end zone. Phillips certainly has not been afraid to take his shots here. Second and 10 from the 45. This time on the near side, finds Orsini up to the 39 where he stopped. Clock will keep running. After the gain of six, setting up a third and four. And that that's actually probably a bigger play than people realize. Taking, you know, what the defense gives you, third and four is much, much more manageable than, than third and long if you would have taken a shot there, lower, you know, lower percentage completion. Four ten left now. Phillips takes the snap. Throw, turning around, Wykowski, and he makes the grab for the first down. Yep, clock will stop as they move the chains inside the 20 now. Spartans have to go quick. And if you're Mellon, you don't want to give up even, you know, you're up two touchdowns. Make it easy. Don't give up the first one, and then you know, things really get tough for them. First and 10 from the 20. Throw towards the end zone. Short. As battling out on that far side there was Coyne. Phillips is throwing some good balls. He's starting to gain confidence in the passing game, at least. You can see he put it in a good spot because the only guy that was going to get to that ball there was Coyne cutting back. So mm -hmm. it was well executed, just, just couldn't quite get the ball there. Okay. So second and 10 from the 20. Blocked at the line, knocked down. Yeah, they're starting to heat him up a little bit. They're that starting to bring the blitzes again. Kevin Cook. Cook, who I believe is in the game right now. Oh, he's, I thought for a second that uh, Robert Corey was out, but they have Cook in there as well. Okay, third long. Definitely have two plays to get it. Looks like at the bottom, they have Wykowski soloed up with Williams, their best cover guy. 
47 to play, third and 10 from the 20. Phillips takes a snap, here comes the blitz. He looks to throw, back of the end zone. Wykowski can't get there as it's out the back of the end zone. And a fourth and 10 coming up and the situation where the Spartans have no choice but to go for it. Yeah, he, he gave his receiver a shot there, just, ah. Two more yards, yeah, two more yards out of the back of the end zone. You might have a chance there, but unable to complete it. Coach Zeb is going to take a timeout. He knows this is basically the ball game. This is your best play. Whatever your best play is, you got to pull it out here. We'll see what they could do. Fourth and 10 from the 20. And the timeout called by Coach Debelak. They've been going to coin a lot, and we'll see if, if that's the option here. We've seen Riley Nurick be a target a few times. Michael Wykowski seems to be someone that we've seen a little bit of rhythm with with Phillips, but either way, a must get fourth down play here for the Spartans. To have any hope in coming back in this one, they have to convert here. So we'll see against one of the best defenses in the country. First year, Aaron Phillips pressed into action today due to injuries to Drew Saxton and Ian Kipp. Fourth and 10 from the 20 in the 36 playing of the Academic Bowl. Takes a snap, looks, the blitz comes, and he fumbles it, and it will be recovered by Carnegie Mellon, and that should seal it for the Tartans. Certainly, even if they don't get a first down, make it an even taller task for the Spartans to come back. A good gain on first down there by Vasiliadis. Up to the 36 yard line. Gain of four on first down and the clock ticking. Coach Devilak not opting to use his timeouts yet. He's got two of them remaining. Imagine if they get a stop here, maybe either way, this will be where Coach Debs uses that first time out. And there is that first down. Vasiliadis up the middle, and that will be a first down, and that should just about do it. Well, it certainly appears that another edition of the Academic Bowl will go in Carnegie Mellon's favor. The Spartans went eight straight years winning the Academic Bowl up until 2015 when Carnegie Mellon put an end to that streak. And since then, they've won all but one playing of the Academic Bowl. up on the scoreboard gonna score 13 points across two games and it's a tough defense out there it's a t it's a, a little different scheme it's not necessarily something that you see from a lot of teams out there it's very very linebacker heavy linebacker dependent and, and they've been able to recruit and develop guys that have that have allowed them to stick to that scheme and, and cause a lot of problems for opponents and, and particularly case western because you'll see their other games some some teams for one reason or another are able to put up some points case western's had a real difficulty the last two years 
Meanwhile, Carnegie Mellon, which entered the game with the longest winning streak in all of the NCAA, it looks like they'll stretch it to 17 games now. And what an impressive run they've been on. And for them, a redemption trip. Remember last year, they won the PAC, were scheduled to go to the NCAA tournament, but on the way there, uh, had to cancel the game due to, due to COVID um, and forfeit their NCAA tournament game. So this year, they'll get another shot and maybe even a chance to host this time when they they finish this one off. So congratulations to Carnegie Mellon on a tremendous season, undefeated, 10-0, 8-0 in the PAC, back-to-back -back PAC champions. Siliadis takes the handoff, and that should do it. it. Looks like one timeout, looks like they might make a sub or two. Yeah, this will wrap it up. I mean, it was, I'd say, very, very dominant from the Tartans' defense. Case Western's defense came to play as well, just just too much. Too much of the, the Tartans on the defensive side of the ball really suffocated the Spartans' offense. Spartans forced to adapt. It was, it was good to see Aaron Phillips get in there and, and get some good reps. He, Really can't put a price on the experience that he got today. I thought he showed some good stuff on the ground, also through the air. Just feel for for some of the seniors going out like this. It's a it's a tough loss to to have it at home on senior day like that. But should be proud of how they played. Uh, I mean, the team that came in here is is 19th in the country for a reason, and, and Case Western for much of this game. And you know, at the end of the day, it's probably only going to be a 13 point 13 point deficit for them. They they played tough. They stood toe to toe with a top 20 team in the country and. And now you see what the measuring stick is. You know what a playoff team looks like. Everybody coming back next year has an idea of, of where they need to get and the quality of, of team they need to be. So it's a good experience, disappointing end of the season. But again, congrats to, to Carnegie Mellon for getting the job done. So on fourth and five, the Tartans will punt. And that one will roll all the way down to the 10. And inside the 10 and with about 23, 22 seconds left. The Spartans will get the ball back. And we'll see, probably just run it up the middle. I don't think they're gonna take a knee, but get one more snap, take one more run, and then this game will be good and over with. So Phillips, a nice showing for him. And really what, maybe not his collegiate debut, but certainly his first snaps of the team relying on him on offense. That pass incomplete, bring up second down and 10. We got 18 seconds left here. Let's air it out, what do you say? I agree. A 91 yarder here at the buzzer, that'd be okay. What do you have to lose, right? Sure. That's what Phillips is thinking here, trying to buy time, scrambling, throws. Good and catch. The pass is brought in along the sideline. That's Coin. Tell you what, him and Coin both coming back next year. I think we might have a little budding connection. There. <laughs> I think that one could be something that we see in the the 2023 season pretty often. And, you know, looking forward, it'll be interesting to see for next year. Is it Kippick quarterback? Is it Phillips? Is it someone else? The transition from Drew Saxton, whose brilliant career has come to an end as a Spartan, the all-time leading passer in program history in basically every category. Yeah, and do want to just kind of reflect on his career. I mean, it's been awesome to watch him for the last four years, four years and change, and, and see all that he's accomplished. You know, Drew has, has really been a leader from day one for this team. As he touched on, he's got so much of the record book in his name. He's, he's going to finish you know, pretty high up in the, the Division Three all-time rankings as well. So shout out to him for continuing to lead and be a real bright spot for this program. And that pass ruled incomplete, and that will do it. 
So Carnegie Mellon wins the 36 playing of the Academic Bowl, 20 to seven the final score. Real defensive battle today. Carnegie Mellon taking a 14 to nothing lead early on with a couple of touchdowns with a short field and then adding on a touchdown in the second half to put the game away. So the Spartans fall here today, drop to six and four to finish their season. Carnegie Mellon completes the perfect season 10-0 on the year, 8-0 in the PAC.